Well, welcome back, everybody, for a very somber and serious uh, special edition of Health Talks with Dr. Trin. As we talk about the health of a whole country that's going through hell right now, as we talk with the people who are really there and really living through this living nightmare, as we continue to explore, as we did before, what the hell is happening in Ukraine? Um, but uh, Ukrainians shoot it and it fall down on a house. Wow. So I heard it and it's like very uh, scary sound. It's sound that should, uh, that you should uh, hear it hell. It's like, and you try to understand how far was that? And are you the next one who gonna be this sound? Um, so every time we go down and after I found the account of um, one man who have been to Syria, who have been to Donbass in 2014, and he said that it's not a good idea to hide underground if it's not a special uh, place for hiding. And we start to live in our bathroom like a lot of people did. Uh, like we put their, I don't know what, like everything to make beds in a bathroom. Um, in a bathtub? Yeah. Okay. And after we realized that it's a bad idea to live in a bathroom and we go into a... Uh, Nika, could you help me, corridor? Uh, it's in the hallway. Oh, yeah. Uh, so we live there because there is a, like, a rule of two walls. You need to hide yourself um, after two walls. So first wall will be destroyed if rocket ca came. And the second will save your life. So the only one possibility to be in a safe place, it was this hole. And uh, in five days, we decide to uh, get out of the city. Mm -hmm. um, and um, we do not want to do it with a car because um, our city was surrounded by Russian, not surrounded totally, but like somewhere, there were somewhere. And uh, actually, it was scary to stay because, for example, one day before we decide to move, it was the commandantsky uh, chess. Um, how to tell it? Uh, like, so what? Uh, um, let me see. So it's when the army people say you shouldn't go out because the some shooting will go will happen or something. So like they just everybody to, should like, stay at speak. house. Everyone who will be outside. Uh, are in danger so sit home so we sit home for like two days and after it was possible we left and it was pretty scary and horrible it was just a train where you can go without tickets yeah. uh, so me my husband uh, data uh, data who was 20 i don't know 8 28 day uh, 28 days old right. um, we went to um railway station it was a really long way because uh, we need to um, cross the bridge. And the bridge is a, a very important place. So uh, there is a lot of stuff where everybody checks your documents and are you a terrorist? Are you Russians? Yeah. And you should stop everywhere. And uh, finally, we uh, went to the railway station. And uh, at the war time, nobody paid for tickets. So you have no uh, opportunity to sit uh, in a comfortable place, like to buy a comfortable ticket in a comfortable, yeah. uh, I don't know, place in a train. So mm -hmm. everybody yeah, So just... uh, yeah, no one has a guarantee that they will get on the train, first of all. And there were a huge crowd on the railway station every day, the whole day until the curfew started, like the whole time. Uh, mm -hmm. Outside of curfew, people were trying to enter any train they could. And as um, Valerie mentioned, our city is divided into two parts, and there is a huge river Dnieper in between. And there are a couple bridge, uh, uh, several bridges, like seven bridges uh, to cross the river. But there are like lots of checkpoints and lots of cars uh, crossing the river back and forth. Someone had to pick up relatives. Someone need to buy something. So it's overwhelmed. And uh, to get to railway station itself, especially from the residential area where most people live on the left bank, 
uh, it was a real hustle. So it would take people several hours just to get to station and then several hours to, you know, get through the crown to have the opportunity to get to the train. So people could come, you know, several days in a row, even walk to the railway station to get the opportunity to get into the train. Yeah, I've seen people who were walking uh, to the railway station through the bridge and uh, um, because, for example, you can use the subway, uh, but subway do not cross the river. So subway go till mm -hmm. last station on one side of the city and starts from the next one. And you can do nothing like there was no way to cross the bridge on the car or by foot. So, yeah. So let me interrupt nice. for one second here, because unfortunately we did lose some. Uh, um, on Facebook, other other mediums, they could hear you, but for Facebook, there was a problem and we've resolved it. Everybody can hear you now. So I just want to give a quick re overview of who you two are for those that might've missed the first five, 10 minutes of the show. I think we just lost Valerie again. Um, it is difficult getting internet signal out of there. I apologize to everybody. I appreciate everybody hanging in there with us. Um, uh, we uh, brought on today, um, um, I'll let you introduce yourself one more time here, uh, Nika. Uh, you live, you are here in Los Angeles, but you're Ukrainian. You usually lecture on health issues, and you were all set to go back home until this crisis happened. Is that did I get yeah, that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I had a flight home on the exact day where the war started, and all my family, my uh, business, my team, like, and all my friends are in Ukraine. And then you brought on uh, somebody that you knew who was uh, uh, Valerie, who hopefully will join us again here if she can get back on the internet. Uh, yeah, well, she, Valerie is a um, host on national radio called MB, and she has a eight week old baby and she had to flee her home five days after the war started to go to Western Ukraine from the capital. And that's what you I guys- I can hear were... everyone. Is it a problem with my connection? No, no, we, we lost yeah. you there for a minute. You disappeared, yeah. yeah. Oh. Yeah, was... So um, uh, anyway, and then Valerie obviously fled uh, Kiev, and that's what you guys were talking about, this major city. This, if I understand it correctly, I've never been to Kiev, but it looks like any modern European city. I mean, this does yeah, exactly, not... Exactly. Our tourism was growing up and because of um, people not really being afraid of COVID, somehow mm -hmm. ignoring it. We had a lot of tourists from Europe who wanted to, you know, spend some time in the clubs, hang out, a lot of, you know, young people saying right. Kiev is in New Berlin and stuff. And uh, I had an right. Airbnb in Ukraine and it was so popular during COVID. Like <laughs> I couldn't, you know, explain it because so many people were coming and they said, oh, why didn't we come before? Because it's such a beautiful city and it's completely, you know, modern it's you know southern years old but at the same time all the restaurants all the like infrastructure is great i mean it's like U right. europe <laughs> so <laughs> i wouldn't i wouldn't feel any different if i was probably in prague or berlin or any other no uh, you will definitely it, feel the difference because our restaurants are the best in europe i guess <laughs> well uh, other than it being better than those places <laughs> well uh Definitely. Yeah, uh, a lot of uh, cities were destroyed during World War II, but Kyiv was sort of intact, so we have lots of old buildings, like the huge city center, all historic, and it's very nice, and at the same time, a lot of new development. So it's really up-and-coming city, it used to be, but then one day, someone decided to take everything away from us. Yeah. You know, it's hard, it's hard to believe it, and it's hard to imagine happening something like this in Paris. I, that's what exactly I guess that's what same. I'm getting at, and and I maybe you can comment on this. So we sit back here, just trying to wrap our heads around this. Why and what and and what and what happens next? And it's hard for us to imagine in the modern era. This isn't the 1920s. This isn't uh, the 1820s where armies rolled in and devastated cities and stuff. We thought that was gone. We didn't think we're an interconnected world. Mm -hmm. uh, we have interconnected uh, economies and interconnected flights, and and we didn't think that uh, we didn't think this could happen. Did the Ukrainians really think that the Russians were going to go this far? That they would roll in like Czechoslovakia in '68 or or uh, well, as anything? you hear from us, we were completely relaxed, and Valerie was at her home. Uh, I was uh, going to fly to Ukraine the day before, so everyone were completely, you know okay, nobody expected them to go all the way, like the, to do the whole country intervention right. because they used to have fights in the eastern part and everyone expected to have, you know, uh, that 
continue and our, our army was fighting back so there was something going on for eight years already but no one ever expected something like this. So U.S. Uh, government uh, um, re required their embassy employees uh, to come back to yeah. U.S. Yeah. like in the beginning of February. But Because uh, they kept saying, I, this is really going to happen. Everybody's, oh, come on, you're just overblowing yeah. the crisis. They'll find a resolution. You know, the Russians already uh, support some separatists in the east and prop them up and been fighting it. So they'll probably move in and take over that. And they took over Crimea, which nobody was happy about, but you know, they'll take some little piece and they'll call it a day. They didn't think they'd take over the whole country or try. Well, I hope they will never take over the whole country because you know, that's the worst nightmare for Ukrainian to be under Russian because you know, Russians never heard of democracy, never heard of freedom, never developed anything. I think like the, like the people in Russia didn't ever expect that we're such a flourishing country there. Oh, right. So they come, they, you know, soldiers come to Ukraine, they, you know, fight there, they see the villages and then they say, oh my God, they have, you know, pavement uh, in the villages. Yeah. They have lights on the streets. It's, you know, like, like, a, like a normal country. They have toilets inside the house. Yes. Wow. 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 You're right. Are you serious? That's not, wow. <laughs> yeah, they, I think their perception was that, uh, well, uh, and, and, and I won't speak for you, so I'll let you, one of the common things we hear, Putin has said this repeatedly, and I think it was his surprise that many Russians, because you come from a common ancestor, Ukrainians and Russians were a uh, thousand years ago, all so, kind of sprang from this uh, common uh, group of people. So, nope. let, me, let nope. me stop you right there, because yeah. we don't have common ancestors, but we were, a you know, united by Soviet Union and Soviet Union was suppressing Ukrainian culture, Ukrainian language, right. religion. Right. So that's, uh, that's the artificial impression that we have something in common because we don't, unfortunately, yeah. that's the common, you know, misunderstanding. Mm -hmm. We have more in common, like Ukrainian language has more in common with Polish language, like 60% right. and wow. like 40% with Russian and Russians do not understand Ukrainian language. Like if we speak, and they do not understand Polish and Slovakian and Czech language. Yeah. They do not understand European languages, uh, but we do. And all that we've got in history common, that's Russian or something that have been in Russian part, uh, always try to destroy everything Ukrainian. So for 300 years before this moment. So it's nothing new. It's just the continue of something that happened in 300 years. So what is the daily situation yeah. like now <clears throat> for the average Ukrainian? Uh, I and, know it's different between cities, right. but... Uh, and here so, in the Western part, so the assumption was that that's still safe, and yet they've been bombing that now recently. I'm not sure right. that it's still safe, because uh, the first my uh, stop, stop city was Lviv. It's like a good, perfect city in a Western part of Ukraine. Right. But uh, we slept with a, a air raid. You know, the sirens, they are screaming like, careful, rockets are coming. So it doesn't mean that they are coming to your house. It's mean that they are coming in this direction where you live. Yeah. And we live there for uh, two weeks because uh, the random woman said, uh, I had a problem with my breast. I'm doing the breastfeeding to my child, and because I do not have, I didn't had a, um, a opportunity to visit doctor during the war. Mm -hmm. It started a big problem for me. So when I uh, came to Lviv, I try to communicate with uh, someone who can help me with the problem. And the woman who started to help me, she said, "You can live in my apartment." So it was a random woman that I never seen before, and we were uh -huh. living in her house for two weeks and we decided to move uh, because it was too big explosion in Yavoriv uh, place. It's like a um, place with the soldiers. And this is completely scary. When you hear the sirens, it means that you need to go underground. Mm -hmm. But the last night, the sirens were for five hours. For example- For five hours, the sirens are going five on. Five sirens. Yeah. yeah, and I was in a bath. Uh, I was washing my uh, hair. Uh, data were sleeping, and it starts the sirens. So I get out from the bath with everything wet. Like I put my uh, jacket and stuff. Uh, I took my sleeping baby, who started to scream because sirens—they are really 
scary. It's sound mm -hmm. that you can hear yeah. even if your windows are closed. Like, be careful, the rockets, you need to hear it. And you go to the place where it's cold and um, because it's underground and it's not okay to live in this condition. If you, um, if you have this experience every night and they're shooting with the rockets at night, because they want uh, to make, a, I guess, a psychological attack as well, you know? Right. Like all country To break is the spirit of the rocket. country to, for the people to, to give up, yeah. Yeah, so, and you're for five hours sitting in a, a cold um, place. Bomb shelter. <clears throat> yeah, so it's not okay. And we moved to another city. Uh, at least the city is far from some um, uh, Arm, soldiers. Army bases. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and there is a sirens here, but what I'm doing, it's like I'm closing my windows and I'm not reacting anymore. And it's stupid because it's dangerous, but I'm just thinking, I hope it's not here. It's not going here because it's, uh, you should be the idiot if you want to, uh, like shoot with a $1 million rocket to a private house in a village. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, Really? Why so, do you want to spend yeah. one million dollars to blow up somebody's private house here and kill them yeah. and their baby? And so their when you say it's uh, safe in the western part, it's not. They we've got explosion here, but it's mm -hmm. not the same like in Kharkiv, like in Kiev. It's what, different. What about the reports that we're hearing now? I mean, we're all trying to make sense of this, and and the first thing that disappears in time of war is truth rumors start spreading about everything. The latest rumor, the latest theory is that your neighbors to the north, the Belarusians, are going to, under pressure from their, the dictator that runs that, uh, the puppet that runs that one, if, if that's a fair way to describe him, that he's going to, because uh, the Russians are out of men and he, and, and he, and the Russians don't want to lose any more men, so he's going to force them uh, and to invading your country as well. And that now you have two two nations. Is that? Oh, we have somebody else in the waiting room. Okay. Ready to come in I'll get them. Talk about that. Is any fear that any truth to that? Do you think the Belarusians are going to send troops across the border? Your, your neighbors? I'm pretty sure north? it's already happened because uh, uh, they, they are dictators and uh, Lukashenko received money from the Putin. It's not official, maybe, but like, have you seen the revolution and how the dictator? killed people during the revolution like they do not they do not care about feelings of people they just like power right yeah but how would the belarusian people feel about that how, I, I i i don't know anything about belarus or i know it's a similar language i know it's another similar uh culture but haven't you followed the revolution that have been like uh two, two years, years ago, ago there no. I, you know what? Most Americans couldn't find Belarus on a map. If you okay, if you let me say it. they tried to uh, said that it's not okay to make elections false again, right? right. And uh, they were killed on the streets. Everybody who were on the protest, uh, they've been arrested. Uh, some of them been they had very bad uh, situation with a uh, um, I don't know. Uh, yeah, a lot of people were tortured by police. They were arrested. They were kept kept in prison with no reason except of going on the streets and asking for you know real elections because they were trying to reelect the person that they really want to rule the country, something new, uh, but not to have the same. So I wanted to also introduce one more yes. person uh, here, Valentina. Uh, she lives in LA uh, with her family, yes. but. But now she felt uh, the need to fly to Poland and then go to Ukraine to help there. So are you in Ukraine right now or in Poland? Yeah, I'm, I'm in Lviv, uh, where my family is. So I'm trying to convince them to leave. And I think it worked otherwise. <laughs> I think it worked otherwise. So, so and that's um, a, that's a I, forgive me if I offend anybody here, but we're all trying to make sense of this. And one mm -hmm. of the shocks that uh, so many of us feel when we read the reports is not just the uh, 3 million people, 3 million people they're estimating now have fled the country. That's almost like 10% of the country has left. Uh, and, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Where do they go and how do they live and how long are they going to be there forever for a day, for a week, but how many of them get, took their families across the border and then immediately went back and said, I'm going to fight. 
I, I, I'm not. I'm so not first just of fleeing. all, uh, men cannot leave the country because they're like it's you know, war, war situation. Right, yeah, yeah, and uh, they, that's they the are... reason why I'm still here. Uh, I do not want to leave the country with a newborn baby without my husband. Yeah. Like where I should go as a refugee with a newborn baby, with a, nobody care about me. Like where I would take money, where I'm gonna live, who gonna right. protect me? Because I can do nothing. Uh, all I can do is like care about the baby. He right. can't anything without me. So we're staying in a not pretty safe uh, part just because, sorry, it's a child. Yeah. Uh, just because <laughs> I think my, the child uh, summarizes how we all feel right now. Just screaming. Yeah, right. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. So I can't go because like my husband should stay here because it's war and he can receive this document. That means that he should go and fight with the Russian animals. Yeah, let's not confuse refugees with socio-economical opportunists. Mm. Um, Explain know, that. I, I don't understand what you mean by that. So yeah. People don't go abroad because they see it as an opportunity to live in the European Union, you know, or... Um, Make more know, money or get a better look, job look or something. Look for a better life, right? Yeah, right. Um, people go there because either something, you know, their apartment is being bombed or... Actually, it's easier to protect something when you have less people. So our army is asking us, if you can, can you please get the hell out of, because it's easier for us to defend. Right. Mm -hmm. When there's less of you, where you can be used. Uh, as, as human as a, as, as, a, as, a, as, a, as hostages, as a, whatever. And, and yeah. So right. many yeah. ways to, you know, yeah. So even things like, uh, putting guys with the stingers on top of the buildings so they can intercept um, the missiles and rockets, right? Mm -hmm. uh, if you have less people in the building that's being used to shoot something from, who turn on the lights and make people up there visible, you know? So it's, <laughs> there's so many reasons why it's better for people to leave. Mm -hmm. But again, they're not going there to look for jobs. So there's a lot of connections. Uh, you, you know, so you've gone home. halfway around the world to go back mm -hmm. to your family, to make the case in person, leave, get the heck out of here. Let the troops yeah. fight this out. And your family is saying what? We're never leaving. We're not leaving. It, it looks like this, just look like my family example, my dad, right? My dad is eligible to leave. He's like, I cannot go. I'm staying with my wife. It's not my mom, but my, my stepmom. My stepmom says, I cannot leave. I have a, a child, my stepbrother, who's 35. He can't leave. That's it. I'm not going to make mom say, you know, goodbye to her grown-up kid. I, it, it, just forget it. I have a 15-year-old. I would never leave him. So it, this argument just doesn't work. So mom stay because of their older kids. And that's it. And it's like a chain. And I think it's in every second family. Um, so people so are staying and fighting. And even those fleeing, I hear reports of women dropping their kids off, literally dropping their kids off and then going back and saying, please take care of my children. I'm going back to the fight. Women, men. A lot of women picked up the arms. Yeah, I'm, I would be useless with arms. So yeah, I'm, me too. I'm better in supply chain. I'm better in buying and moving things. So that's where I'm, and I'm still working full time. So I bring some money into the country and stuff. Uh, but a lot of my friends, my girlfriends picked up arms. And that's my question to, to all three of you. I can't wrap my head around being in a war zone and wondering if my child is going to be killed by a missile. I, I can't to, to do that day after day. What does that do psychologically to you? How does that wear? This is that show about health after all. What is the health of the Ukrainian people, right? I know they're resistant. I know they're mad. I know they're not quitting. But but talk about their health and how long can they handle this? Well, first of all, the supply chain is broken in most part of the country. So people don't get, you know, the basics. Like they don't get, you know, uh, balanced meals. Like two, three times of the, of the day as we expect, right? Some... Uh, some cities are completely disconnected. They don't have electricity. They don't have heating. And they're standing, staying in bomb shelters where it's really cold still, without hot meals, without, you know, any normal sleep. 
because it's always interrupted by the sirens. So there is nothing left from the healthy lifestyle they used to have, even remotely. They don't move enough because, uh, you know, they stay in the bomb shelters. Again, one more time, they cannot even, you know, take a walk, like walk their dogs because sirens, because bombing. So it's basically people imprisoned in bomb shelters. And uh, um, a lot of volunteers, uh, some like government organizations, some, you know, foundations are trying to deliver at least some basics to the bomb shelters. Well, you can even imagine if you move the whole hospital to an underground floor, they don't have real bomb shelters, like in the most part of the country. So let's face it, it's underground floor. If you move the whole <clears throat> hospital on the in the underground floor, they don't even have the restroom there. So if it's an injured person or a sick person, he is not very mobile. So it's it, it, it's even impossible to go one level up to you know use the restroom. So, so beyond physical base... health, talk about mental health. How do you live in fear day oh, after day I without can, sleep? I can answer you. Yeah. Uh, first five days, it was the most scary days of my life because when you um, holding your twenty days old child and you can't leave the city and you hear the explosions it's like you feel like like you can't do anything and this is what i felt first time in my life i can't do anything wow. there is a bombing somewhere uh, i can't leave the city because um, too many people try to leave and they're just like you know cars are not moving they're standing and very slow moving like five kilometers hour and we were sitting and we were scary and i was crying all the time like um you never been so uh, useless you can't do anything you're totally controlled by fear and by putin's uh, animals you know so now when we moved uh i feel less uh, fear because i don't hear explosions i hear just the sirens and they're not so regular here as in um, Kiev because in Kiev they are like five times an hour can be sometimes and here there was no sirens today still and so one day logic, yeah one day without sirens yeah. so Valentina logic, what what uh, what what is your family feel I know they're angry I know they're upset <laughs> I know they're ready to fight but they've got to also be frightened and tired and worried and yeah, you know, it's like a fight, flight, or freeze, right? The yeah. normal three, well, the typical three reactions. And if I would guess... Denial, anger... If, yeah. if, 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 if I were to guess what's the most prevalent response, and just looking around people around me, most of the people are in a fight mode. Right. Um, there are some freezes, like, and especially the, the, the folks, to, you know, like our friend here who were in, in the middle of... You know, bombs falling on your head. This is where you know you, you feel useless and whatnot. But majority are fighting, and in you fight in many different ways. Yes, right. And I mean, whether it's trying to do something mm -hmm. uh, because that gives me comfort. Uh, I'm myself. So my, my boyfriend who's in Los Angeles, he keeps calling me and saying, like, I don't know how you're handling this. I'm like, right. how am I handling this? I'm moving power banks. I'm, I'm moving uh, equipment. That's my fight mode, and I need it for me uh, to stay sane. And, I, and my entire family is like this. So they they're just we got the license. We are moving things. So maybe go to Poland, pick up things, send them to the east. So like everybody's working. So let That's me the way let, we deal with this. Let me ask Valerie <laughs> a question again. Are you here. speaking to family and friends that are kind of stuck in the city? Yeah, yeah. Are we all hit? Yeah. What are, are we, they? How are they? You know, how are they dealing with like no power, no water, no electricity, and all that right now? How what the they? first words? <laughs> what oh the first words? Well, well uh, there are uh, a lot of people like posting about it like some of them still have internet connection from time to time and most of them are just you know they just accepted that they can die one day like today or tomorrow or at some point and they're living with that just just accepted it like that like they were completely happy in their new homes and then 
One so day. you say that so casually. I can't imagine most people in Orange County just accepting. As well, I do not have anyone who live without electricity, uh, like right now in Ukraine. I know it's happening in uh, Mariupol, probably. But uh, actually, I was talking to psychologist from Kharkiv, right? Because uh, she was in a like building that was okay. Like a lot of uh, buildings were destroyed, but this building was okay. And uh, my friend, um, she's got a son like one year old, and they live uh, in a very small village, and they can hear uh, the explosions, so they, that's why they do not move, uh, because they see that there, there are street fights, so they do not want to move with a car. And uh, they said that the, for them, problem is that they've got a very mm, big problem with the pumpers and uh, a special food for babies. But actually, everything else is okay. Mostly cities lives uh, normal, like with electricity. Uh, like Kiev is with electricity, with the water, with everything else. And um, like my dad stayed in a city that is occupied right now, and he can't leave the city because they controlled everything. And there are a lot of stories, like somebody tried to give like five hundred dollars to leave the city. You know, like yeah. uh, anything bribe your way out, right? Corruption to these yeah. uh, animals. And uh, they've been killed. So they took money and killed people who tried to leave the city. Uh, so he sits uh, in the occupied city, so two, like a lot of people do. Two more questions. I'm trying. I'm only trying to cut you off a little bit because we're trying to get as much in as we can. We got about ten minutes to go here on the show, ten or fifteen minutes. Um, two more questions that come to my mind, and then we'll open it up to questions from the audience here. First question is, how? I- I'm an American, so immediately my first thought is money. What do you do for money? How do you buy food? How do you how do you pay rent? You're, 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 you you have no that job. Money is not a problem. Uh, money is not a problem because, uh, for example, my dad right now have got money on a credit card, but city is occupied, so nobody can put the money, like money, you know, like right. um, how to money that is paper money, not yeah. like yeah, cash. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh, you've got a problem with this. And uh, for How example, do you pay for everything, gives... though? I mean, you still got to live. You still got to buy food. You still got to buy shelter. So, you got to um, buy baby food and everything. How do you? You have no job, I'm assuming, right now, and and you're my living. My husband got the job, so he continued to work. Mm-hmm. And uh, me, uh, oh, and my mom received the salary, but she is not working. But somehow she received a salary, so uh, she work in um, uh, from the budget. She, re- she received salary from the budget. Right. So somehow it works. I do not have salary, but I receive uh, money for a child. Mm-hmm. It's not a big uh, money, but it's a maternity leave support. Right. Ma- maternity. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 So but, for my family, but at some point companies break down and they can't pay people, and people have and, no uh, money and their savings run out. I want to tell you and... a story how we how we live here. A couple of days ago, our new neighbor in this new house bring us a potato. Another woman help us to buy uh, shoes because we left apartment in a winter shoes and right now is like uh, spring. So mm-hmm. we were trying to buy shoes and she's just like, oh, you are refugees. Let me help you. So and even in the case that I've got some money right now, I received too many help from everyone from this part of Ukraine. They see that I'm like a refugee with a baby and yeah. everybody helps. It's like crazy. Someone bring us a soup yesterday. Like, hello, we are neighbors. We don't know us, but here is the soup. Wow. And it's really weird. Everybody try to help you. I lived in an apartment of a woman uh, for two weeks. A woman I've seen the first time in my life. Because everybody tried to be the best one at this moment. Everybody right. tried to make anything for, uh, make Ukraine win. Like, if I can help to this woman, I'll do this. That's what I feel here. Uh, that says it all. Everybody trying to do their best to win. Ukraine is very communal. Like we, in general, we are very, our nation, we are very communal. So um, what's going on is very natural to us. You know, you, somebody gets hit and there will be 10 people who's going to run in and try to help. Um, Zelensky is already doing certain things where um, some of the taxes got prepaid and lowered. Uh, he started to send help for people who moved. It's like... The government helps businesses work. Um, I have 
I work in engineering and I have huge teams here of guys who can't leave yeah. because of the martial law. All of them work. They, they write a software code in a bomb shelter. They go upstairs, committed. <laughs> They go back, go and, back and I tell them, you can take some time off. You know, dude, you're being bombed. And he's like, I need to work because I get the money. If I get the money, I send it to the army. That's in the head of people. Wow. So businesses are actually, of course, in the, like Mariupol, her son, that's understood. But in the rest of the country, we are all working. We have to. There's no other choice. So two more questions, and uh, any questions from the audience, we'll interject those as well here. I, I just got to think two thoughts. One, what happens to the three million people who have fled the country? Do they hope they're going to come back in a week, a month, or will they never come back just because they can't? Or, or it, it goes on to are they permanent refugees somewhere else or for a long time refugees somewhere else? So what we'll do we just think have anyone uh, here, I guess. Who yeah, so we'll, country, right? we'll, yeah, we'll all think that um, you, like all of you, like foreigners, will be very surprised how many Ukrainians will come back home. Yeah, yeah, because they just announced they're going to take a sure. hundred thousand yeah, into yeah. the U.S. and we're taking uh, uh, Europe's opening its arms. People, Poland has taken a massive number of people. And the question we all have is: Is this forever, or is this just for? We hope it's for a while, but. As well, of course, some people will stay forever if uh, they like if they get you know used to if they like it. Maybe at some point their partners will join them, even if they were drafted to army or something. But uh, I think also a lot of people love their home and they want to come back. Right. I guess the question is um, not correct. Like, how many people will come back? I guess a lot of people will come back if if it will be safe. Right. When I will go back home? When I will go back to Kiev? I will go back to Kiev when Russian animals will get out of there and it will it will be safe. Like if they will stay in Kharkiv, if they will stay in Mariupol, if they will stay in a lot of different cities, it means the next time they start the war from there and right. it's still going to be closer. dangerous. So I'll go to Kiev when we, Ukrainian army, any army of any world <laughs> help right. us to make this bullshit go home. And that yeah. means that it's going to be safe enough for me. So that's my last question, and then I'll shut up here. What is, I, what is the um, what is the hope that uh, that this will end soon versus versus this is going to be something that drags out for months and months? Do you do you get a sense from just the people you talk to and and the folks that are around you of what it looks well, like. The, well, the Russian army is pretty big, just, you know, people-wise, and they can draft more and more and more if they just want to send them at us. Right. So we have no illusions that it can end in one day if Russians want to keep it, you know, going. So Ukrainians are just fighting back as long as they can and, you know, hope for better and hope for help from the neighbors, help from the world, because, uh, you know, we got rid of our nukes in like getting promises that we will be you know helped but at this I point guess, uh, yeah. we're Sorry. on our own <laughs> yeah that's really one of the forgotten stories in this is that when the soviet union split up a lot of nuclear weapons were left behind in ukraine which fell under their control and the world the u.s and the europeans said please give up those nuclear weapons and the ukrainians said sure we don't really need them but why should we get, they protect us. And the world said, just give them up. We'll stand by you. You, we, you. you don't need these nuclear weapons. If they had those nuclear weapons, would Putin have invaded? Probably not. Probably not. We gave them to Russia. Under the terms that they will protect us. Yeah. Wow. Uh, are you, um, what is your sense as far as, uh, as far as, you know, quote unquote, making a deal, giving up something of value, land, or you know, things of that sort, just to. Is there a compromise to be had at this point, or, or are the Ukrainians yeah. saying all or nothing? Yeah. It's. I mean, we have this war since 2014. Right. Yeah. Really, really, guys. So, if there could have been compromise, that would have been done. Back then. Back then. Mm-hmm. Uh, right. and, and, and yeah, I mean, 
Sorry, what is the compromise? Do you want to kill Ukrainians because they are Ukrainians and, and then they do not want to kill Like yeah. there is a, our country and we said we are Ukrainians and we are not Russians. Ukraine right. is a different right. country. And they come here and said, no, you are Russia and we want a compromise. You should say that part of us are Russians. Right. Let's do a compromise. Fuck off, maybe? <laughs> yeah. I appreciate your bluntness, yeah. and I, I, I don't, I, I'm not advocating anything one way or another. But I think we all sit on the side and we say, "How does this end?" Because the it seems to have gotten into somewhat of a stalemate. The Russians seem to be gearing up for another offensive. They're going to maybe bring in troops from Belarus and other things. They certainly have an a, a large, 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 overwhelming force that they can bring to bear against a smaller country. And we all wonder, can this, can the Ukrainians survive? Or is this, uh, is this just going to turn into Afghanistan and endless, uh, you know, uh, you know guerrilla the thing war? Is, actually, it can't. And I'm not a military expert, so please don't take my advice. Um, <laughs> but, but, um, Chechen war, there were two Chechen wars, yes, right? And, there, and Russia is known for doing this kind of stuff. Uh, but, that scenario where something can drag for seven years is not going to work for Ukraine. Why? Because we are actually big. It yeah. will take a lot of resource to occupy the country of that size. 40 million people and in Ukraine. Now, this isn't a exactly. small Chechnya. No, we're not right. talking this. We're talking, and you also, it's the country that hates you. Right. And we are known for really powerful guerrilla movement. Right. It would be the worst idea on the planet to try to occupy it. Even if allegedly, let's say they take part of the South. Good luck. So you know. holding that. And because the, the theory is, well, okay, the two sides have kind of reached a stalemate and the Russians are being pummeled with sanctions <laughs> And the uh, Russian army looks uh, uh, disorganized and has been shown not to be as powerful as we all assumed it was uh, and well-run yes. and well-organized. And so it's it's an embarrassment. It's not working. It's costing them a lot. At some point, they'll try and cut a deal uh, and cut their losses. And many people are saying, I don't think the Ukrainians will take a deal at this point in time. No, they killed our kids. They killed kids. They killed lots of kids. All right, welcome yes. Tatiana to our show here. Tatiana, where are you at? Hi everyone, sorry because I really like uh, have messed with uh, the time. I'm in Amsterdam with my son also. Uh, so hi to everyone in the last five minutes, I guess. And did you leave, uh, uh, were you in Ukraine and fled to Amsterdam or have you been there for a while? Um, I've been, uh, so... Yes, Tatiana uh, fled from Kiev, from the capital. Yeah, I, I'm from Kiev. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and uh, at the morning of twenty uh, fourth of February, uh, we were we, we were with my son and with my colleague uh, in Lviv. Mm. Uh, so it's much closer to uh, to the border. So I guess now everyone knows there is Lviv. Right. Uh, and uh, we decided uh, to go to the border and to. Uh, go to Europe. So uh, two weeks we were in Berlin after like three days on the border by car uh, and uh, two weeks on the road uh, plus. And, and what's and, uh, it like to flee? I, I, just two questions. You know, the, the, the physical uh, journey of getting across the border. We hear reports people, the cars are so backed up, people are just leaving the car on the road and walking across the border. Anything they can do to get across the border, which means you've left everything behind, not just your house and your and your home and your family and your friends, but now your car and everything you had in the car. You literally just walk across with the clothes on your so, back. So right? Tatiana spent three days on the border to drive it, to drive, you know, because uh, yeah. the so car I, line I was so much bigger. Yeah, I decided not to leave the car uh, because it was like, actually, I don't know. Um, I can't uh, like figure out uh, what uh, should you des I decide then uh, in like a couple of days. Uh, but it was the first day then I, uh, it was the first day of the war. Uh, then I decided to cross the border. So I cannot, I can't pretend so how much, uh, uh, do it last so um we like stand with 
uh, with our car in the line. So it was like nine kilometers and three days, you know. And so in how do you survive here? You, you drove to go to Amsterdam. Did you have friends or family there? Or did you just keep driving till you couldn't drive anymore? Um, here? Uh, no. Uh, so lucky me, uh, I have friends in Berlin. Uh, so we drove from the border to Berlin and lived there for two weeks. And after that, I, we decided to move to Amsterdam because of like private reasons, uh, like with friends and so on. Uh, and now we are here. So it's, it, for, for us, it's comfortable now. Uh, uh, short story, I, I work for nonprofit and f I have my own charity platform. Uh, so I can work from everywhere. Right. But for sure, we want to, to go home as it can be happen. Yeah. So when do you think any hopes, any, any, what are you hearing on the ground? Are, are, are Ukrainians uh, beginning to believe this is going to go on for months, maybe years? This is going to turn into a guerrilla war. This is not just going to go away. Or is there some hope that they're going to come to their senses, the Russians, and get the well, heck out? Not, none of us is a war expert, but at the same time, everyone is a human. So we all mm -hmm. hope it ends today. So people stop dying because that's all that matters, right? Like people being safe again in their homes. But we've so, got the deadline actually on the our media and social media. There is our uh, Aristovich. It's a person that everybody listens to every day. It's a person connected to government, and he said that give us a month and we will kick them. Kick so <laughs> we strongly, I strongly believe that in a month something can happen. Okay. But, like, we've got three uh, plans for our life. We are sitting here and waiting. We're coming back to Kiev to rebuild our country. This is the best plan for us. Right. And if uh, things are getting worse, we are going to Poland Sorry. and next to Switzerland or somewhere in Canada. Because if everything going to be worse here, it's going to be Poland going to be next, Germany going to be next. It's not going to stop here. Like, Putin is the Hitler, and everybody should realize it if it's not clear still you will understand it a bit later with the blood like we do do is there a feeling in i don't know you're none of you are uh, poles or latvians lithuanians estonians all these other groups but is uh, there's got to be fear in all these former soviet republics that they're next that putin wants no. it all back no. I can take this I because I lived in Poland for eight years um, and I have a lot of friends there. Um, Poland has been hurt by war probably more than anybody and I'm talking World War II uh, to the point that their memories are so fresh even like 80 years ago later. So they understood what's going on before anybody else. That's why they just opened their arms and said like, we know, right. we get it. It's a problem. So, uh, and they are already working on. They put more budget into their army. So, it's Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia, all the Baltic countries. Nice. They're all in the union because they see Hitler 2.0. They get it, and this Hitler has the nukes. They understand. Right. Um, they have no illusions, and I wish Western Europe would listen more to the Central Europe. Um, you know, who, who's got the memo? So do, you feel, the... do you feel you're getting, um, I know you feel, I know there's a lot of support, but is there sufficient support or do you feel somewhat upset because like, like here are the arms, you know, here are some weapons, but we don't want to do anything else. Uh, how do you feel about that as far as, uh, I mean, there's, I'm sh there's emotional conflict, right? Cause nobody actually wants to send mm -hmm. people in, but they'll send you some, you know, supplies and weapons and things of that sort. I mean, oh, can what? I, can I start to answer this question? Yes. The biggest, uh, the biggest problem for Ukraine for a long time and right now is the rockets. This is the psychological pressure as well to all country. Like I'm saying you. I can hear the sirens, maybe you can hear it if it's going to happen during the broadcast. But uh, we were asking like everywhere, like our politics, people in Instagram, not to close the sky, like help us to fight the rockets and we can do everything else here on the land. 
but and, and there are it's there are um, anti missile things like our Patriot missiles that we supply to Israel and other places. Our missile defense systems that we've chosen not to go there because we think it's too provocative. But we may get to anyway. That point. Like yeah. you are asking, what what is not happening? Uh, a lot of people died because the uh, the sky is not closed. So yeah. this is one of the biggest problem, as I see. It's just my opinion because I'm hiding every time I hear the siren. I'm hiding. And, right. and, and let's talk about this just for one second. And, and again, I, I hope, don't want to offend anybody. We're trying to honestly understand and do this. And I think Americans are very torn on this idea, as are Europeans. Should we try and send our jets and our missiles and try and shut mm -hmm. down the sky? The fear is that to do that, we'll have to shoot down Russian jets. And if we, the minute we start shooting down Russian jets, it's World War III and the nukes start flying. Such an interesting question because... What do you classify as a world war? Right. Two plus countries, three plus countries? <laughs> right. Because if it's two plus, Belarus is already providing, so by the you know yeah. uh, Geneva Convention and whatnot, there are already three countries involved in exactly. that. Um, and you know, I, I have my own shit list, and actually for me, China and India are in the top. Yeah, they're, they're, they're not doing much to support the the support they're they're being very quiet on this and trying to, to uh, be neutral or yeah. play uh, support Russians even yeah well it's, it's a great moment of power play and China can get a lot out of it yeah they can use it it's so I think I get I'm pissed off as as a Biden when he went to China to talk about China instead of saying hey we have this situation here you know. Yeah, we have not been friends for a long time, right. but let's figure out something that will benefit us both and help Ukraine. Instead, what he did, he threatened them with sanctions. He, I get it, but fucking not the right time, man. Well, and, like, and, 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 you and need him on your side for once. Although the, although the Chinese, uh, we're trying to figure out where they're going to come down on this. Clearly, they are supporting the Russians. In anything that embarrasses the U.S. is good for them. And they're trying to get Ukrainian wheat and oil to come their way rather than go to Europe. So uh, to a certain yeah, degree, they, they, they're they supporting Putin in hopes he wins and takes it all over and then ships everything from Ukraine, not to Europe anymore, but to them because they need it. They're communists, right? They have a lot of right. connection. They like when people listen to one guy. Right. I get that. but And also Russia has a backup plan. That's why the economic sanctions kind of work halfway because – Plan B is China. You close SWIFT, they send money through China. That's the only really country that we need to come on our side, and then Russia is screwed. Yeah, if, if we could get the Chinese to flip, then the Russians would have to fold. But and clearly the Chinese also are viewing this as a test to see if the, if the Ukrainians, if the Russians can take back Ukraine into the Soviet empire, then maybe mm -hmm. they can take back Taiwan, which they've wanted for 50 years as well here. I mean, there's there's yeah. layer after layer of this, and it doesn't seem that we're not sure which way the Chinese are going to go on this. And should we pressure them or should we try and befriend them? I don't know. We're not very friendly with them these days. Offer I, something that's better than Taiwan. You all know? right, so Tatiana right. raised her hand. She wanted to chime in on this here. Yeah, uh, Yeah. just one of times about like close the sky and uh, European people. Uh, because I've been for two weeks in Berlin uh, with German people, right. uh, and they are really afraid of closing the sky. Very much. So, uh, so at the moment, they are like um, helping me and my my kid, and they are like welcome me at their home and help Ukrainians and volunteer and like donate to Ukraine and so on. Uh, then we spoke about closing the sky and uh, like the the first hour like ask of Ukraine. Uh, so uh, they are like uh, become like silent. Uh, or then uh, they discuss, so uh, we don't want to do that because their uh, World War Three will begin. That's we're afraid. We're all afraid uh, that the so minute, uh, if we really shoot down, the minute any European NATO country or the U.S. kills a Russian to try and stop them from flying or doing something, the minute that happens, they're afraid that the escalation is unstoppable and we've got world do you war remember the history of uh, second world war okay yeah. or maybe russians should call it this 
a second world pet operation, probably how they call Ukrainian war, right? Uh, yeah, special everybody, ops. Everybody man. were waiting. Maybe Hitler will stop. Yes. Maybe he is normal. Like I'm not sure, but it looks like yeah, but... if everybody will waiting, uh, you will see the new Hitler. Like it looks like maybe we are too, yeah, but, uh... too angry, but it's what we can see here. They just coming to kill. You know what they say in the national news in Russia? No. They said that here is a lot of Nazis in Ukraine. Yeah, I know, that Nazis. we are making a biological weapon that we hide in the birds. Right. And you're just like what coronavirus were invented in ukraine yeah. guys it wasn't that long ago that there were many in this country who were saying well ukraine maybe they were really the ones that hacked the election and just tried to make the russians blame for it. the russians are blameless they're good uh but it was yeah. the ukrainians that did all this and they've been corrupt and they've been uh, uh, uh evil you know uh, it, it, suddenly we're all embracing ukraine but uh three four years ago there were many in this country who were were trying to portray ukraine as a corrupt place that the we should the, the better the conspiracy yeah yeah all right yeah. so uh, uh we had some questions here i just want to give a shout out to some people here thank you for listening we're i'm open to going a few more minutes if you are dr trin i mean no, i'm good i'm okay. good just keep i don't on. have another show yeah. doing this so let's this is a rare opportunity to talk to four yeah. brave young women who are, are willing to come on and share with us what they really see, not yeah. what I'm reading and trying to figure out in the news from all the chaos and confusion. Everybody's got a point of view. All right, somebody said um, earlier uh, a question about, and I'm sort of summarizing here. You guys understand these dictators more than I do. You had a, 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 a Russian Maybe it's too harsh to call him a puppet, but this guy that you kicked out in 2014 who fled to Russia and started the whole democratic revolution that really infuriated the Russians and they feared would spread throughout the area, maybe to their own country. The Belarusians uh, squashed it. The Kazakhs recently had some revolts and the Russians sent troops there quietly, which nobody paid any attention to, to support the dictator there, just like they propped up the, their dictator in Belarus to the north. Uh, and some th think that this Putin won't stop until this whole democracy is squashed because to let it live on would be a threat to his whole control over Russia. Can he ever quit? I mean, is he he's just in this to the end? Either he's going to get overthrown or, or he's going to he is crush the, the country. You know what is the Tsar? <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. He's the king. He will never quit. So, so how then does this end if if, if he has endless power, uh, not endless, but he has... Well, he should eat, uh, eat something in a bunker and die. Uh, that's how it should well, end. He'll, yeah, he looks like, uh, since we're on the health talk show, first of all, Putin looks pretty sick. Like yeah. if you watch any video with him, he looks pretty sick now, but it may take months and years until he actually die and we don't have that time. That's what I'm saying. I mean, so if you've got wow. Hitler... Hitler, people assume, well, we could have stopped Hitler in Czechoslovakia. We could have stopped him in Austria. We could have stopped him here until we finally said enough. And we started World War II when he invaded Poland after giving him a couple of countries and hoping that was enough. Um, I think many Americans hope, I hate to say this, they would sacrifice Ukraine and they would say, okay, I feel really bad about it. But gee, if it stops here, let's just cut a deal and give them half the country and call it a day and hope that it goes back to normal. Maybe some Ukraine. I don't think many Ukrainians feel that way anymore. Um, yeah, except it's not for U.S. to decide. Oh, I know. So. I, I, but I mean, at some point, does the U.S. and the Europeans, I don't want to say decide, but at some point we've got to decide how far do we go? How long will we support this? Or at some point do we start pressuring everybody to just cut a deal and to, uh, and to make it go away? Uh, that's a horrible thing to say, but I think that's... No, I, I get it. You, you know, like... We have this joke. So there's North Korea and there's North to Korea. This is what <laughs> Russia is turning into yeah. at the moment. You know, are we okay as a UN to have another outcast? Um, and it's a pretty big one, 140 million people, right? Yeah, right. It's difficult. And 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 I that's my personal opinion. I don't think Putin dying helps, first of all, because he has Double gangers, there is like he has at least four clones because yeah. in the news yeah. from the past time you, you see him handling in events in four different cities at the same time. 
Yeah, right. and, I, and I think that's but, been the assumption that it, this isn't just as as powerful as Putin is, as much of a dictator is. No. There's four other mafia bosses that would gladly take over and do that if he there, died. There's more. There's there's more, and I do have friends in Russia who are now fleeing right now. And what they told me uh, when I just, the war just started terrified me because they called me and say, "You don't understand. He believes in this. He's been lying so much, him and his community, they that believe. at this point they actually." believe that there are some nazis that they're saving from and it's like a you know collective psychosis you don't fix collective psychosis no you you, you start to believe your own bs style. here and they believe the ukrainians are really just russians yeah, and while they'll really eventually people they'll mm -hmm. come there's just some people that are I, I don't understand why they're fighting this we're 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 helping them we're taking them over we're going to bring them back home here um so the, well, the question that somebody had on the internet was a good one. What your, I know, I'm just asking your impressions and your family's impressions. I, it's just what's your own experience. Is the average Russian behind this? Is the average Russian soldier as gung-ho, believing like Putin that this is a just cause and a just war and, and it's, it's time to take them back and bring them back? And are they supporting this? or Because we hear stories of Russians walking away from their tanks bewildered why they're even there um uh, protests popping up here and there and others say oh no that's just western news trying to build up story is there a story there are the russian people behind this what do you think any of you 20 years 20 years of propaganda yeah 20 years you're being told that black is white right yeah I even have those people in my own family and one aunt that she, like, it's unbelievable. That thing is powerful. So Good. if you do it for 20 years, there's a huge support for Putin. Okay. That's and, not uh, good news for all of us, that. but yes. Yeah, they yeah, they and post. Valentina is not alone. A lot of families can't communicate, like my family as well. <laughs> I can't communicate with my relatives in Russia because they said, no, it's your army killing your people. Yeah. <laughs> Open your eyes. Don't watch the media you watched. And the media I watch is a window, you know. Okay. And, also they, and also Russians say, okay, sit tight, friend, or, you know, sister. Sit tight. We're going to free you soon. Just we're going hold to on free you. We, we're here there to free you, not to conquer you or crush you or kill you. We are there exactly. to free you. And we were free. Uh, when slaves can, came, uh, right? can free yeah, the so free people. The, Tatiana? Uh, yeah. the, the main idea, this, uh, the difference between Ukrainians and Russia, that uh, Russia is always like for hundreds of years. So like always, because Russia is like hundreds of years, not yeah, thousands. Dominating power uh, in the area. Uh, right. Is uh, forced, like all the people are forced by fear. And people in Ukraine are forced by freedom, and this is the main difference. Mm. And that's why these people from Russia, even like they are our relatives or like parents and someone else, uh, living in Russia became became like the people who <laughs> uh, watching this propaganda, and they are like uh, yeah, they're only acting from the point from the point of fear. So they don't yeah, get so it. They don't like get the, it. Because we read over and over again that one of the subtle tactics, uh, the, the Ukrainians have risen up in a way that surprised the world. Let's be honest. Um, everybody assumed that the Russian might would roll in, and as much as Ukrainians fought, they would lose within the first week or two of the war. They would just be overwhelmed, overrun, bombed, <laughs> defeated by this massive force, and it hasn't happened. So that's been a shock to the world that the Ukrainians have stopped this Russian juggernaut and the Russian juggernaut has been seen to be not as powerful as we all assumed it was. Very confused, very chaotic. They're so corrupt. And corrupt, oh my yes. Gosh, right. morons. But, uh, corrupt. You know how it works. Uh, uh, there is a, a lot of homeless people in Kiev and homeless people came to guys who protect our city. It's not an army. It's just the uh, active people. Who yeah, militias would like to and weapons. whatnot. Yeah. And the homeless people said, we are trying to find the bottles. Would you like to, we can give you the bottles that we are find so you can make a cocktail of Molotov. If you need it, we can help you. The, the homeless, homeless people, people will collect bottles so you can fill them with yeah. fuel and burn, uh, and burn a tank. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Right. everyone, everyone doing this, you know, 
it's like you can't free us because even people who do not have nothing to lose don't want to be Russians. Even here. people who have nothing to lose don't want to be Russians. So I wonder when Russians, your friends, your family, the people you've talked to in Russia mm -hmm. will wake up and realize that this is not going to go well. This is Afghanistan. This is Iraq. This is the Vietnam War. This is I'm an endless fight. <laughs> yeah, that you have seen. So the, the sorry to interrupt. Yeah. The, those folks who who see through the propaganda all this time, there's a percent of them. I don't think it's big one, but it exists. They're actively moving the hell out yeah. because they understand this. The Iron Curtain is gonna fall. They will be again north to to Korea. That's it. So people on the run, um, but majority, you know, it's. And there's nothing you can do. Like if you've been working on 20 years and making somebody a zombie, right. how much time it will take to undo it? It doesn't work with one, you know, news podcast, with one picture. It doesn't. Okay. World proclaimed Putin to be a war criminal. Russia's like, no, this gotta be nah. No. You know, so yeah, those fake who news. Get it, 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 well, we live in that world out. now where nobody believes anything you hear even in our country. You hear it and you just dismiss it. That's just fake news. I don't I want to believe that, so I won't believe it. So I got to believe then that if they, what you're saying is true, the will to fight is there where homeless people are willing, who have nothing to gain either way, are willing to, to enlist and join the fight. If if it's that much determination, if if the Russians have completely misread the Ukrainian people and their will to fight, then this will not end quickly or quietly. This will go on for some time and the Ukrainians will keep fighting and the Russians will keep flattening their cities and, and the world will keep sitting back in horror, hoping that it ends and fearing that it'll spread. It, it's your opinion. My opinion is different. No, I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I'm trying to, to give believe, me your opinion, please. Yeah. I want to believe that economic of Russia collapsed soon that they would have the iron, how it's called, border, you know, like right. it was in Soviet Union. They Person. can't move anywhere. They will keep themselves inside. They will uh, live in this bullshit, but only they. They wouldn't have money, and they somehow, we gonna win. We will receive enough uh, support from the world, and we gonna win. Putin should die, and we should win, because this is unfair. Everything that happened is unfair. My child shouldn't live no. in an apartment of people that I never seen. My child should sleep in his own bed. He shouldn't sleep in the bed of people that I never seen. This is unfair. It can't happen. That shouldn't be like that. I'm going to support you because my wife and I were talking about this, and, and she said, she said something I thought was very powerful. She said, "Okay, so everybody's pushing, hoping this will come to a compromise, and maybe the Russians." get part of the country and maybe they pull out. But in the meantime, how do you explain to all the mothers out there you don't. why your children died? You, d you just don't. You can't leave the half of country to the Russia because the next time they will start the war from this part of Russia right. and they will go to Poland. Like, okay, world do not want to see that, but world do not see what the Russia is. They are sick animals. So if uh, we, and I agree, I think, and, and I think we've all seen enough of history to know that even if the Russians seem to overrun the country in the short run, they will never conquer the country and the country will keep fighting back. And you'll have this, and, and to, like they're uh, like what they went through in Afghanistan and what we went through in Afghanistan, this notion that we could somehow come and just take over a country and turn it into something if the people don't want it. Uh, or Vietnam or other places that we think of here in the U.S., these endless wars that we eventually realized were foolish and we gave up um, uh, after a long time, though. So I think th there's no question that the, Ru the Ukrainians have shown they're not going to just go away. They're not just going to surrender. They're not just going to give up. Having said that, how long will it take for Russia to collapse, for Russians to wake up, for somebody to overthrow Putin, for all these things we keep hoping to happen. It can't be quick. It's got to be a while because Putin's all in. Right? There's an awesome saying. There's another saying. So this is a war between fridge and the TV. Um, Say that again. The, I'm sorry. It's a war between. It's a war between fridge and the TV. Refrigerator because versus TV. 
Yeah, because the TV is putting some thoughts in your head, right? right. But fridge basically controls your basic, you know, your food. hygiene factors. So when there's nothing to eat, eventually you do stop listening to a TV. Absolutely. That's why it will end when China, again, on my shit list, number one, yeah. will figure out how to use it to their advantage and support us because that's when fridge will start winning. And, and that's the question, and nobody really knows. That angry people will, you know. There are many this. people that say, yeah, I, I just did a post on this a while ago. This is maybe a little too complicated, but the, the Chinese very quietly been trying to push this trillion dollar initiative called Belt and Road, where they're going to build a giant, basically rebuild sort of the old Silk Road trade route from China all the way to Europe. And it runs through Iran and Turkey and Kazakhstan and Ukraine because the one thing the Chinese don't have enough of is oil and wheat and basic commodities. And so their hope is when they finally fill, finish this road and highway and tr train and transportation corridor, that they will compete for all the oil and resources in Eastern Europe. And, and rather than going to Germany and Poland, it will come uh, to China. So some people say they're all for the Russians taking this over because the Russians will then turn much of that over to the Chinese. I don't know if that's true or not, but I don't know that the Chinese see an advantage to helping the Ukrainians. I think they'd like to conquer the Ukrainians as much as the Russians would and take everything they've got. That's why I think somebody needs to show a class in diplomacy from US yeah. and for once figure the hell out how do you stop this, you know, uh, well, diplomacy war, foreign policy issues, and figure something that benefits both? You got to find a win win. Yeah. yeah. That's why I was pissed at Biden, but he's like, he came in and sanctioned them, threatened them. Awesome. Because that's helping me. No, it doesn't. Well, because that's the, the assumption is they're <laughs> dictators too, and that's the only thing they understand is a threat. I get uh, it. So maybe you somebody else, you know, like Zidensky. Who knew that he would be a great president? This guy was he a was comedian. I We thought it was oh, a joke when you elected Absolutely. a comedian. So he does things differently and <laughs> it worked. So maybe you guys, and by the way, I'm an Ukrainian American, so I took it yeah. to myself. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> maybe our government can figure out, be creative for once. I hope they will be. I don't know how they can. I think that... Uh, we can't understand the Chinese motivation any more than we understand Putin's motivation. It's hard for us to understand why. I, I wonder, you know, he, he wanted to squash the Ukrainian uh, democracy because he was afraid it would, uh, he, he has this old fashioned notion that Russians, oh, we're all just brothers and they'll welcome us with open arms. Uh, he has this megalomania of recreating the Soviet empire again and making Russia great again. Where have we heard this before? Make our country great again. Take over other parts of the world. All this stuff that goes from, and many of us here go, I, I don't understand that. I don't even understand why anybody would do this in today's world. The Re Ukrainians are not going to, even if you win, you lose. Even if you take over this country, you're not, it's the price you're going to pay is enormous and they're never going to give up. So don't you get that? And also, and also we, we've been under Russia technically in Soviet Union and right. they were trying to suppress us, but they didn't succeed, right? Like we woke up like years and years, decades later, and we still have our culture. We still have our books, our separate you know, music, language, separate everything. culture, separate everything mm -hmm. here. Yeah. Yeah. So I, 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 there's no question that the history says over and over again, these, these, these dictators, these conquerors, these long-term invasions never work. Who, whether when we did it as the U.S. or when other countries have done it, when we've tried to take over countries and, and force them to become something they don't want to be, it never works. Having said that, it doesn't happen quickly. So that's the fear. Oh, my God. And it could easily spin out of control and, and turn into something bigger where they go after Poland and the Baltics and, and now suddenly we're committed to war. And I don't know. Can we contain this? Can we control this? Can what what more can we do as Americans? Let's let me ask you that. Other than sending in jets to shoot down Russian missiles and creating a no fly zone, which we're afraid of. Um, other than that, what can we do? We've sanctioned the hell out of them in a way that I never thought we could do that much sanctioning. And we've gotten the world, other than China and maybe India and a couple other places, to really go along with this. 
we've we've put a big hurt on the Russian economy, I think. Uh, or, or is it and just... Th and thank you. Yeah, I'm so grateful for that. Because if they can sell gold, which is their reserve, yeah. you know, ruble is... It's, it's dropped 80%. It's, it's worthless on the world currency. <laughs> they thought they were going to uh, miss their uh, their uh, sovereign debt payments. They're, all this money they borrowed from the world, they didn't think they were going to, and they were going to default, which would totally <clears throat> devastate their economy here. Then they get no credit. No, Their banks can't uh, exchange money. They're becoming an isolated entity here. And I don't know. It, it, we're playing a game of chicken, as they say here in the United States. Who's going to oh, yeah. blink first? And the Russians have said, we're not blinking. We're going to go all in. We're going to flatten Ukraine if we have to. We're going to kill everybody just to win. And the <laughs> Americans are saying, if you do, you're going to pay a heavy, heavy, heavy price that will eventually bring you to your knees. Yeah, there is a very bloody and very quick solution, but nobody will go for that. Uh, what is the quick know. solution? Just a no-fly zone? To... No, Nag Nagasaki was a solution, but that's like, you know, yeah, we're not doing that. We're civilized. It's 2022, for God's sake. Yeah. Um, right? Uh, and then, I, I, I don't know. I, I'm going to you know, give my opinion, then I'll shut up because I keep talking a lot. No, no. Uh, uh, we, we, we called no, to hear well, your opinions and to, and to share a little yeah. bit of our frustration and fear as well. We don't know what yeah, to do. Either. Yeah, so what I... What I hope for, figure out this China situation, because again, China is a plan B right. for Russia. If they have no plan B, and, and, and these guys don't have plan C, just believe me. Yeah, right. They think of them too much. Um, too many so, times. I heard some politicians yeah. say, so what's your plan B? He said, go back to plan A. The only, the only yeah, backup yeah, yeah, is yeah, to yeah. let's go back to the first plan. Yeah. They're, they're in love with themselves and perilous. So yeah, which actually plays into all of this to our favor. So this China situation and another thing um, that I had on my mind is like what I personally fear the most, that it will become a long time war. That's what I'm saying. That's, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying people, to jinx it, but I think it's just, I fear the same thing. Right. It's like when people will, you know, if you see something, if you see a picture of that kid 10 times, right. you, it's, you know, as humans, we stop reacting to it the way we did the first time we shut it so, off it becomes exactly. just, it, so it's I'm starving terrified. babies in africa i've seen them so many times it, it has thing, very little exactly effect the on same it. thing so i'm terrified I'm of us turning into syria yes. iraq you know whatever would help stopping this to become a long-term thing and again i'm not an expert so i don't know what it is but that will help. <laughs> yes. Yeah, um, Tatiana, answer, you want to... We are not an experts. Yeah, go we ahead. We need to listen to our president and give everything he asks. So here is the answer. All right. Go. And, and I think other than a no-fly zone, we've done everything. He, uh, hopefully, I, I'm, you tell us if we haven't. It seems like we have yeah, tried yeah. to do everything except that final step. Tatiana? Yeah. Yeah. So, actually, uh, I'm in Rito. Uh, nobody from uh, this like room is not a, a military expert for sure. So we cannot, we couldn't pre pretend they are start of, of such war right. uh, and we cannot uh, pretend the end of it. But we understand their, uh, the meaning of values, like human values right. for now. Uh, so, and the human values is like the most important thing uh, in all of our lives and we understand it. So no money, no like, and the gold, yes, and, and, and uh, sorry. Uh, no gold, no gas uh, are like something like uh, important, uh, but like values, like human, human values, and right. uh, yeah. it's the same in Ukraine and in Europe and US and so on. So it means that uh, there, there's never be the same uh, with Russia anymore. So. Uh, their time of USSR was like their uh, the best time for Russia, I guess, and will never be the same because everyone understands that uh, it was like fake and with iron like uh, something, yes. <laughs> but uh, nobody can like uh, in our generation and the generation of our kids uh, 
uh, no one will re respect Russia at all. No, I, I think so, if they ever hoped that the Ukrainians would embrace and come back to Russia, that that hope is gone. There, you've created a hatred that will last for generations now. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, somebody, <laughs> I just want to make one quick point, and then I'll turn it over to Nika to, to end it. Um, uh, one of our guests, who I'm assuming might be Chinese, um, said, please specify, please make clear that when we talk about the Chinese, we're not talking about the people of China. We're talking about Absolutely. the Chinese government, the, the communist government, the dictatorship that uh, exists in China that, uh, like other dictators, only thinks about their own self-interest and what's good for them and not Absolutely. the human values of the world. Yeah. Yeah, we I, hear you, we know. We're good. And it's I think okay. the same thing with the Russians. That's what I was trying to get at. I, I wonder, I, I get that Russian the ordinary people have been filled with propaganda and have limited and have been have been fed this lie and narrative for so long that many of them believe it. Just like in this country, there are people that I'd argue the same thing, get fed lies and believe them. Um, but uh, that this is really, as they keep saying, it Putin's war. This is a dictator trying to impose his will on another country for his own ambition, his own madness, his own ideas, uh, and all well, of that. Ukrainian, Ukrainians don't agree with that because we showed Russians how to do the revolution like only eight years ago. Yeah. They know the scenario. They know what to do. There are 140 million people. If they don't agree, they go out and do the revolution. They already did and it in 1991. Yeah. Uh, do you remember Navalny come back to Russia yeah. to show that I'm ready to die for you guys? That's Let's hard for me to wrap my head around. The guy is safe yeah. and he comes back and puts himself in prison. Yeah, he to went make a to point. prison and he expected that Russia will stand up and will start the revolution. But what uh, what they did? Nothing. nothing. <laughs> That's all that they can do. They can do nothing. They are ready only to kiss Putin ass. That's all that I'm ready for. So this hope that the that the few revolts and are not revolts protests that we've seen will spread is probably false. Uh, mm -hmm. For until the Russian refrigerator is empty, uh, as Valentina said, they will <laughs> keep supporting or believing, or at least out of fear, staying indoors. Whether it's fear or belief, they will not rise up and demand an end to this war, which would end it if the Russian people turned out in mass in the streets. That would end it too. It ended our. You can't put everybody in jail. Jail is limited. So. Yeah, exactly. You can't put everybody in jail. You can't shoot everybody. Eventually, as you guys showed in your own. We're talking about Russia. Yeah. Please. They have unlimited jails. This is Russia. <laughs> so they got a lot more room than so, you think. Uh, yeah. we, can, we can remember Archipelag Gulag, Solzhenitsyn. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I started to read it uh, like one week before the war. And I was so afraid, was f so afraid to, uh, wow. to read that so I like it's finished and now we like see the same. Isn't there a fear too that I'm sorry to keep going on, but that if the Russians succeed, if they bomb the country and, and literally level the city and drive everybody up, but if they did, I, I hope you're right, that they will start, even in parts that they control, won't they start rounding up people and, and deporting them and putting them in camps, won't they? They're already doing it. They're already <laughs> kidnapping people from Kherson. They kidnapping people from Kherson and driving them to Russia. We don't know their, you know, future. Overall, so in 2014, there is a concentration camp in Donetsk uh, region. Really? Okay. It calls, uh, you can read about this in a book that called, uh, can you help me with the translation? Uh, Stanislav Asiev wrote a book. He was the prisoner of this concentration camp. Uh, he is the Ukrainian. You can check the information. He is, the book uh, name is the uh, Light way so the light mm -hmm. way the light way the, the, the way of light the way of light <laughs> oh yeah uh, yeah it's light way light but way. it's in ukrainian it's in ukrainian so I, i'm not sure if you can find the book uh, in but you can find the author in yeah. facebook stanislav mm -hmm. say well so uh i don't know how this is where it ends i don't know how long the world will stand by and support you or at what point I fear that we'll give up and say, all right, it's Syria. I can't do anything anymore. Uh, I don't know. For now, it, it's an amazing story that has shocked everybody why the Russians invaded, how the Ukrainians stood up, how the rest of Europe and the United States came together after being so divided and did all this. Every aspect of this shocks me. 
And uh, I think the next, uh, it will, there's still more probably coming. What will the Chinese do? What will the Belarusians do? Will they cross into Poland? Will the Russians rise up or just go along? All these are unanswered questions that we're going to find an answer to in the coming weeks and months and hopefully not years, but time that lies ahead. This has opened a, 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 an unbelievable scenario that only that because it's so unimaginable, we can't even imagine how it ends. Maybe I'll say that. Is that a fair way to put it? Yep. All right. Thank you for taking the time to share your stories, to tell us what's really happening. Because understand, we're sitting here in safe Orange County. All we're doing is trying to figure out, what? Did you hear this? Is it really that? It can't be. Uh, why? What? When? How long? We, we, we're doing the same, but under the sirens. Under the sirens, yeah. I, I, I gather that because I can't imagine how we would react in similar situations if suddenly a foreign power rolled into Orange County and started bombing us and killing our babies. That was 9-11, Pearl Harbor. Yeah, and look how, look how, they, at, look how the country I, I reacted in 9-11. I've never seen such shock across the country. You know, yeah, once... Yeah, now, now imagine 9-11 every day in the, every city. Yes. That's yeah. what's happening. That's Imagine it. Imagine 9 11 That's every day in every city. That's how you so react. So, already more than 20,000 victims. So, I think that says it all because Americans yeah. can relate to that. I remember when 9 11 hit and I was the uh, other side of the country and I felt fr frightened. What, mm -hmm. Where was it going to happen next? What building was going to blow up next? For a while, we thought this was going to happen all over the country. And that fear paralyzed us. And, and the markets crashed and everybody ran home and everything shut down and just, we had one unbelievable attack and we suddenly thought, oh my goodness, this is going to happen anywhere and everywhere. And thank goodness. Yeah, it. just from one hit, the whole country felt unsafe and right. we got hit like in every city. Yes. So I think yeah. that makes it relatable to us in a way I've been struggling to find here. Um, thank you for sharing that. I hope you will come back and continue to share the story because my fear is like everybody, we move on. Oh, that's horrible, but I can't face it anymore. I don't know what else to do. So at some point we just accept it. And the minute we accept it, if we ever do, then they've won and, and the fight goes on and, and we can't ever accept this. So, uh, as Elaine said, uh, one of our guests, extraordinary testimonies. Thank you. God help you. Good luck. And uh, keep coming back and keep, keep, uh, keep the courageous fight up. You, you inspire all of us. And more and more, we're beginning to realize your fight is our fight. Uh, this is not, this is not just one fight. This is, an, uh, this is a, this is maybe the fight. So thank you for, uh, for sharing that. Stay safe. <laughs> And take care of that baby. Oh my God, I can't imagine my grandson in a war zone. I, I I can't even let myself go there and think about that. I'll start crying if I even think of that. So I am not crying only for four days since twenty fourth of February, just four month. days. Yeah. So that's my small winning because after the pregnancy and a given a birth, I've got a, a lot of tears. And they're connected not only to my body and it's connected to what's happening in my country. Okay. Thank you for the broadcast. Thanks, Thanks for you. having us, Paul. Thank you. Stay safe. And Thank you. Uh, Thank keep you. coming back and telling the story so we can keep this front and foremost in our mind here. Uh, right. Thank you. All right. See that's going to wrap it up. I know Dr. Trent had to drop out. Um, I'm going to end this right here. Uh, I'm going to leave Nika one last chance, you organized this, brought all these people together. What would you like us to take away? What would you like us to remember? Is it that image of not, imagine 9-11 every day in every city in America here? Yeah, if you want to relate, that's the best image. And that's why you cannot, you know, stay aside and watch it because, uh, and, you know, ignorance kills the most. Yes. If everyone is ignoring what's happening, we're dying. Like Ukrainians are dying every day. They're innocent. They didn't bring them... Uh, bring that on themselves and they need your help all right well thank you i i your conversation helps me i hope it helped others and i hope others will share this conversation with others if you really want to know what's really going on here's four brave women
telling their story of what they're really seeing and experiencing. Uh, some who've left, some who've stayed, some who've fighting, some who are ready to fight. Uh, you know, it, it's it's an amazing group of people. And thank you for sharing. I really do. It's, it's a thank rare you, opportunity to hear from people. Thank you, Paul. Yeah. Until next time. Until next time. Yes, there is a next time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Take care. Bye.